his daughters, his wife, blah, 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 so forth and so on. So at that moment, you know, COVID had hit around the same time. Absolutely. So the game stopped for a minute. So it just gave me a chance to start going home. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Man, it's kind of cool. Dang, what's up with my brother? What's up with my sister? My parents? Blah, blah, blah. So I just started living life. And so, um, and I felt like music was just in this place and doing his own thing. And um, I would just always mentor. So people called me to get things done, business, yeah. fix beasts, uh, uh, relationships, so forth and so on, or uh, how to get a new artist popping, uh, how to bring an old artist back to relevancy. Um, and then I finally met um, a new generation of artists that like really motivated me. And who, I just who was in that generation? Uh, Pop Lord, my boy Yaki. Uh, he going crazy um, on on writing. He just started his own label. So I just did a deal with him to get him his own label deal because yeah. he wanted – other niggas in the city that's really like been putting it down forever. And so I just thought, man, you help so many people. Why don't you just start your own company? Because he also helped me like build a lot of things in my company throughout the years. Mm. And so um, to start his own production company and publishing company, um, Marini, who I brought here with me. Um, she just been over there chilling on some Southwest Atlanta shit. Man. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Juicy Two Times. Um, my boy ATL Jacob. Um, I'm I'm so inspired by him, man, because yeah. he's so young, and I remember when he was 16, just running around trying to figure it out. But I feel like he brings a different sound out of the A. He 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 true ATL, but he brings yeah. a different sound. Um, so you know, just people like that. And anybody else who's trying to build, like even the Mike Wills, who's had a crazy run, who um just bought half the block. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely, it's it's going down big. You in, feel in me? The so ATL, I just man, bro. I'm just I'm just so man, I'm just so pro us. Um, they don't make no sense, man. So I want to ask you this. You say you do three days in the studio. What's your process like at this point? 15 years in the game, man, and you was doing this three days on, one day off for the longest. Yeah. So what's the process now? Because you said shit, so it's, so it's, it's crazy. second nature at this now, point. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, I was totally, like, kind of out of the studio. I just pull up and see what's going on and just, like, you know, touch things up or change this and another, like, you know, executive produce. Um, and in the last couple months, um, especially like I said the last month, I only slept in my bed twice. Mm. Just because um I knew we wanted to come out for BET weekend and I wanted to, to present her. Um so we started out by kind of like working out because I always like to see like what a person made of when we work out. Like when you hit that uh when you hit that wall, that threshold, I wanna see how you respond. You know what I'm saying? You gonna stop, you gonna cry. You know, she obviously younger than me, right? So she should be able to whoop my ass when it comes you see how slim she is. Right. I do be beating you though. You let him trick you. You already know what type of time, hey, you know type of time I'm on, Kadife. You know who won. So, you know, I'm just, right, everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. So, hey, so guess okay. what? So, guess what? She coming up talking about she injured all type of, whatever. But now you point, injured? No, you know what? I was I was really injured because I beat him running up a hill. You See, you ain't left that part out. Right. Because it's cap. Oh, okay. It ain't cap. Because it's cap. But my point is, man, like. But she got Kadife to vouch for us. Man, so Kadife, he I don't just be vouching. No I've been with Kadife all his life, so you know, <laughs> he, he man, he you know, he got some type type of um, uh, vengeance against me, man. I can see that. He don't even show up no more, by the way. You know what I'm saying? He don't show up no more. By the way. He too busy. That's the hardest working dude. Just. But he got more money he ever had, so I used to take his money when he ain't really had no money. You know what I'm saying? You know, but wow. we were both we were both coming up. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So you know what I'm saying? But now since we got that check. You know what I'm saying? He like, you know what? I got family. I got responsibilities now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He ain't telling the truth about nothing. Yeah. Man, delete all this footage and start over, man. Please do. Please do. put out the truth on Please this do. network. <laughs> man, anybody in the A know they can see, man. They know what time is going down. Like on the dice, on the bowling, ping pong, jump shots. <laughs> No, nah, but that just goes to show what type of person you are because you're very diverse when it comes to the music, bro. Yeah. Do you have a favorite genre at this point? You done crossed over all of them. You done yeah, made, real, real you done shit. You pop, hip-hop, uh, R&B. Country. Country. Like, what's, what's your shit now? Um, or is it just you know what spur it is? of the moment? It's you know what I'm saying? It's like women. You know what I'm saying? It's like. When you you about thought, to fuck. <laughs> you gonna say some crazy shit. No, nah, it's like know. when you thought you met the most beautiful one. <laughs> All right, let's go on IG, right, when you're going through girls or whatever, right? You think you've seen them all. And all of a sudden, you see one. And it takes you to a whole new world. Like, God damn, where do these motherfuckers come from? Right. And it's music's the same way. As you go through the journey of music, especially when you start to travel, um, and then if you understand the essence of music, which is soul, which is, um, you know, us, right, you start to be like, damn, this shit Spanish, but this shit African, too. 
Man, I just but, saw some dudes in India that was rapping their ass off. I don't know what they was rapping about, but whatever he was saying, I believe it. That's what I'm saying. So it's about that feel, about that connection. And so music for me is the same way. So as a producer, obviously you run across all type of musicians and writers and you know so forth and so on. And one day somebody might come in doing country, you be like, man, I don't really fuck with country like that, but that shit hard. You know what I'm saying? And then he be like, man, you gotta check my partner out. You gotta check my partner out. Then you just go into a whole new world, just like when you're on IG with the girls, and you go to a whole new world of, you know, like um, talent yeah. and and people who do things that you don't do. But as a fan of music, you know, um, it just pulls you in, you know, and, and you just don't be a hater, and you can, man, be wealthy, for real. Now, let me ask you this. I know a lot of young producers run up to you and hang you mm -hmm. hard drives and shit. I'm sure you're still getting CDs at this point. No doubt. Like, but you you one of them ones is like, when a, when a young producer plays you some of his music, does it necessarily have to be a hit right then, or can you hear, like, this ain't the best shit, but you got some? Absolutely. Almost um, everything that was super dope in my career started out that way. You know what I'm saying? I, I would say, like, that probably is my gift, um, just like not being a hater, being open. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got billionaire friends and crackhead friends. No, straight up. I got homeless partners. You know what I'm saying? I got billionaire partners. And once you realize that we are more the same than we are, you know, different, I think that's kind of like with music. When you make something special, it brings all different types of people together. So um, guess what? Think about even somebody like Lil Baby, right? Before, that would have never been considered to be something different than uh, only than a local sound, right? right? But then he blew up globally you feel what i'm saying and nobody saw that company coming you know what i'm saying so i just feel like if it got feel to it it got connection and that's why i always try to teach new artists man let me hear your story forget everything you heard forget everything you like you're inspired by that's great let me just see where you coming from because right. you what you have is something nobody else has and if you could tap into that and then we can put that on a um a platform a wide spectrum then we got something special mm. they got to come to you to get that do you feel like a lot of the young producers be more chasing the hit than the actual? Of course, because you know, because ultimately, like you know, there's money involved, right? So when we all trying to change our lives and come out of um, a place of desperation, that's why I think um, the ones who are truly remembered are the ones who really like um, approach it by and took the art serious. You know what I'm saying? And that goes with anything. You know, I think that's what separates Michael Jordan from anybody. Like Michael Jordan give an interview at 55 years old and he's break down in tears Absolutely. about the game. You know what I'm saying? Because the game is sacred to him. And the art of the game is sacred to him. And so that same thing goes for music. Anybody who's like, um, who take this art and uh, from a, a, a point of um, like indulging themselves in it uh, wholeheartedly, I think it's just a different thing. And those are the ones that we feel. We know that's James Brown. We know that's Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? We know like, when Chris Brown, right, we just feel him. Right. That's it. You know what I'm saying? It might not even be the best song, but we feel him. That's it. Tupac might not be the best lyricist. We feel him. What makes him better than somebody who got a thousand words in two bars? You feel me? And that's what this shit come down to. Like, can you connect? You know what I'm saying? And um, so, yeah. Like, I can literally sit here and ask you a, a million questions, bro. We got a lot of catching up to do. So I definitely got to catch you back. And guess day. what? And 85 South, man, y'all so hard, man. We appreciate it. Man, that. I really respect what y'all boys doing, how y'all did it like nobody else has done. It's an original uh, concept. Um, and, and that's your boy, man, DC, man. It's crazy. I was like the first person to ever pay him to do a stand-up. Now, this is what I was about to ask you because before we started, Shaka Zulu was telling man, I, I, I did all the shit for Polo. So, look, I wanted to ask you, like, to have, like you said, he invested in you early, man. What does Specs. that look like? What did that? What was that opportunity for you? That was created oh, with no, you and your man. friends. Just let me even be around to soak up the game. You know what I'm saying? Shaka was a uh, a college uh, radio station DJ when I met him. You know what I'm saying? That's how early in the game it was. And um, I knew Ludacris. We was just both hanging around the A. In Atlanta, the scene wasn't even like really that big yet. So the people that were trying to like just get on and do this music thing, you would see the same people over and over and over again. And Shaka was just somebody who was like already considered to be like smart, um, executive based and somebody who make things happen. So he would introduce us to a lot of people. And then he was on the radio, but like I said, we at college radio. So eventually he went to hot, you know what I'm saying? He got on the first real hip hop station. Not V, no disrespect to V, I love V, I love Reggie, I love Mike Roberts, I love the whole history of V, but right. they were like um, 
they only had hip hop on Friday nights for Fresh Party. Exactly. But um, Hot was really just catered to hip hop and catered to Atlanta locals. Like to me, that station really is was the turning point in Atlanta because it was like, you know what? Who are you? Man, you popping in, in McKenzieville? What are you popping in, in College Park? Man, pull up. We're going to put your record on high rotation. And so Shaka was a DJ at that station. So, man, when I was in 10th grade, they would play my records. That's, you know what I'm saying? Hard. So he, he just saw me just – like um, just be an energy when I was a kid to, to want this shit, you know what I'm saying? And then I start rapping, start producing. And um, so going to the, what he's talking about, Pimpin' All Over the World, which became multi-platinum, um, Runaway Love, which became Grammy, a, a Grammy winning, award winning record for Ludacris. Um, that was on my first beat tape, both of them records. And um, Shaka was like, I want that record, I want that record. And he was like, this, they both gonna be um, Ludacris' singles. And this is why Ludacris, Ludacris already ludicrous. He already going crazy. And he like, we're going to make both of these singles. And with Runaway Love, I knew that song was special. I said, y'all can't have this unless it's a single. He said, nigga, it's going to be a single, and we're going to make it make it a Grammy. So we we actually tailored, tailored that record. We put um, Mary J on the record. You know, everything was intentional because Luda just wanted to break out from being like a um, comedic, animated, funny type rapper to more like, man, I can do anything and be taken seriously as a rapper, as a lyricist. And so I will give much love and respect and honor to my boy Shaka. You know what I'm saying? I'm a true product of the, of the city, man. Man, I got your publicist lady over there going crazy, man. We can literally sit here and do this all day. No, when thousand. you come to the 85 South Show, I'm going to have my list of all your hits, and we going by. We going, we breaking them all the way down. Man, what kind of hi-hat is that? All that. Let's get it. I might just have to start pulling up to the studio. I'm definitely a fan of what you do. And I appreciate you giving me a few minutes of your time to stop here. BET Awards 2024, man. Paul Don, please continue to do what you do. And we're going to be looking for some shit. When you get off injury, we're going to be looking <laughs> for some shit from you, I'm too. fully recovered now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> BET Awards 2024, 85 South Show, Standing on Culture with Polo the Don. Yes, sir. Hey, man, that's love. 1,000, man. I appreciate it.